It's kind of cool. Nope. All right, so I'm going to start this thing off while we're still getting settled. I am the Dark Tangent, and thank you so much for coming to my party. So, throwing the party takes a lot of friends, uh, and so we have over about 500 goons and almost over 1,500 creators. So about takes about 2,000 people to uh, throw this little event. Um, and some of the people you'll see on stage represent various departments and as I go through the closing slides kind of giving you a recap of what happened, they'll get up and speak about what their department saw and uh, some of the excitement that we have all experienced. So let's get this started. Here we go. First slide. Not progressing. Second slide. Not progressing. Going to backup. There we go. You can pull up the slide now on the big screen from the laptop. Okay. There we go. That is strangely not the slide on my laptop. <laughs> Very interesting. Does anyone know anything about computers that could help us out? <laughs> Anybody? Drink. Just raise your hand and just. No, no one. No okay. One. <laughs> Calling in the experts. Oh, that was smoking. There you go. Those lights are hot. Oh, victory. Yeah. It's gonna Excellent. Go victory. <laughs> okay, now it's working. Welcome to the closing ceremonies. Um, this is something we started years ago. Unfortunately, we are all aging. And, uh, and sooner or later our, our days on earth uh, are over. And so I just want to start off by uh, having everybody just, you know, shut up and uh, just think about the people that you've lost and uh, want to reflect on that. And then we'll kick this thing off. So just a little moment of silence for everybody. All right, awesome. I wish they were here, um, but that's life and, uh, and it's our job to continue on without them. Okay, so something new this year, DEF CON Social. Um, we launched a Mastodon uh, server. You saw some stickers in the program. Um, the thing to point out here is that it's our servers. We own them. It's in our rack. Um, it's our administrators that work on uh, code of conduct issues so they know our community and it's our voices. And so this is purely a space that we control and operate and everybody is welcome as long as you don't fuck it up. So hope to see you there. It's not a replacement for Twitter or all your other socials, it's just another option. So don't feel any pressure. This year's theme, the future was prevail. Um, a little amorphous but really successful. How many people sort of connected with this theme? Let's see. Who kind of got what we were trying to say? Yeah, it was a good one. Trying to be optimistic even though it's, it's kind of sometimes hard to be optimistic. Um, but whether, uh, the future is essentially what we make of it, much like DEF CON. <laughs> so now I want to recognize, and Wynn doesn't know this, two Uber contributors. Wynn Schwartow. Joe Graham. <laughs> so we started this, we started this uh, a year ago with the first two and really we're just trying to call out people in the DEF CON community that have been here for a long time, really given of themselves. I mean, how can you not know Joe Grant or Wynn Schwartow? And the funny thing is Wynn was one of the 
I think it was DEF CON 2 when I met him, and he was the first person to ever release an ebook for free on the internet. One of his claims to fame. And uh, that's how I knew him. I think that's how, why I invited him. Um, he wrote a book called Terminal Compromise, and it was about all these bad guys running around with EMP hand grenades and herf guns. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And, uh, and he went on to be also known for the uh, electronic Pearl Harbor. Uh, the vote's still out on that one. Um, but if Wynn is here, come on up and let me give you your Uber contributor sort of lifetime achievement badge. Come on down. This is one of the rare times in my life I have zero fucking words. <laughs> this 30 years has gone by and it's taken 30 years to get to this point. And I was younger than you are now when we began all this shit way the hell ago. And I honestly didn't think I was doing anything other than helping out the community. And it Shit, look what it became. It was 200, 300, yeah. and, and this is insane. Um, I, n no words, just to the community, I love you all so much, and this is so totally, I I'm shaking, it's so unexpected. Thank you very much. Well, now we all know what it takes to shut up when. <laughs> he didn't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely did not fuck it up. Um, and the second one is for Joe Gran, the originator of our electronic badges, the seed of what turned into badge life. And unfortunately, I think he's, well, or fortunately for him, he's in not, uh, where is he? Not Thailand. He's on the other side of the planet enjoying himself. <laughs> so he doesn't know this is coming. Um, so this will be a big surprise. If you have a connection with him on Twitter or Facebook or something, just bomb him um, and let him know that he missed out. We'll get this to him, no worries. So thank you, Joe. You're awesome. So now we're going to have Mark come up, the badge designer, just talk a little bit about it and a little bit about the badge uh, challenge that um, some of you competed in. So if I could ask Mar to come up to the podium. There, she, there they are. Awesome. I'll move on to the next slide. It'll show you some of the Penrose tiling and some of the different uh, add-ons that people have designed for them. From the beginning concept of that sort of shard to what actually got built. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Let me grab my notes here. All right. Um, yeah, so um, I was really inspired by uh, Penrose tiling. Uh, so I wanted all the badges to fit together in both physical and virtual space. So um, what we did is the shapes. You'll see Penrose tiles are pretty geeky, and if you go check out the Wikipedia page, you'll learn all kinds of things you maybe didn't want to know, but. <laughs> Uh, the human badge is like a wider rhombus shape and all the inhuman badges are a skinnier rhombus. If you put them together, they're an example of aperiodic tiling and you can tile them forever and never repeat the pattern if you don't want to. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, okay. So, oh, yep. <laughs> so uh, what we also have on the badge is uh, a chamber. And we released the specs for this chamber ahead of time. 
so that everyone would have the opportunity to showcase their skills, their creativity in whatever medium it is. So I see a ton of PCBs and blinky lights everywhere and people just doing the coolest stuff. Um, and then I've also seen like really low tech uh, add-ons and those are equally amazing. Like your creativity is just phenomenal. It's been the coolest thing to see. Um, so I wanted to show you here um, in virtual space, if you looked on the back of your badge, there's a URL you could go to and you got uh, an insert with a UUID on the back. If you entered that into the website, you'd be able to place your tile into a collective mosaic and it's still growing over time so this image that we're showing on the screen right now is uh, just the start of it. So go check back on the website and uh, you can continue adding to it for a while and I, we're just looking to see like uh, how can we visualize this community. Um, we have some photos here of the manufacturing process um, which was uh, a little touchy. Uh, we had a mold break three times uh, and so you'll notice some people around Con have uh, a backup badge. Uh, what we did to try and remedy that is uh, the chamber still exists on the backup badges so that you can still show off the awesome things that you made. Oh, and then tell people what we're doing for next year to replace them. Oh, right. If you still have one of these, so we had some goons out in the crowd and they were trading out as much as we could as we were getting shipping, shipments in. Um, but if you still have one of the floppy plastic badges, you can bring it in next year and we'll trade it out for the real badge. Okay, next up I'm going to uh, bring up uh, Cyber Junkie, uh, head of the SOC. Um, we have uh, started to talk about our transparency report and the concept of the transparency report is once we launched our code of conduct, that was sort of like half of the circle. Um, we're telling you sort of what the rules are but if we also don't put a mechanism in place to hold our own, ourselves accountable, it's hard for people to see that we're really doing what we're saying that we're doing. And so the transparency was an attempt, is an attempt to show the community what's really going on and, and what we're doing. Um, so you just don't read this code of conduct text and not even know if we're ever enforcing it. Um, and when it comes to the code of conduct uh, support at the con, that falls under the SOC and Cyber Junkie. All right, thanks everyone. Okay, um, this was a big year. We had a lot of people doing, sorry, we had a lot of people doing a lot of stuff. Um, and it's reflected in the transparency report. Some of the parties we had were some of the biggest and unfortunately some of the other things that happened were some of the biggest as well. Um, we had two humans who were arrested. We had to remove three goons f from staff for various offenses ranging from inappropriate behavior to harassing attendees. We had ten humans trespassed. This is where the hotel essentially asks you to leave and your DEF CON is over. Sometimes they let you back but not all the time. We had nine medical issues. Uh, at one point we had four medical issues. We had four medical issues in a row in the morning which is unusual but people were able to respond and we're starting to get a good partnership with the hotel and with uh, local EMS to get responses. So even though seven of those required transport, we were able to get them to hospital quickly. We had three verbal assaults, two physical assaults, unfortunately six sexual assaults. On site or off site or just reported? just reported. Uh, it's a mixture of on-site and off-site but regardless it, it's impacting our community and therefore it's something we're concerned about. Um, and as I said last year when I stood up here, we will find the perpetrators who do this and we will remove them from our community.
We have three general code of conduct violations. These tend to be things where people just uh, don't get the point that you're supposed to allow everyone here to enjoy the conference. If you can't be in the conference and then allow others to enjoy it peacefully or feel that it's a safe space, we don't want you either. We had one fire. <laughs> we had uh, some counterfeit money. <laughs> two thefts. Uh, three people doing illegal vending. That's where people are hustling and selling stuff that aren't part of the um, uh, official vendor area, so not licensed to be selling on our premises. And unfortunately, frequently, these are people who are scammers, who are selling either junky stuff or who are selling stolen stuff and so on. So we actively discourage these people. Uh, we had three missing persons. We found three missing persons. <laughs> We had one false alarm and we had one case of animal on animal violence. Were they furries? They were not furries. <laughs> <laughs> and as of last night, we had three very fluffy but rather mean dogs. So the hotline received nine signal messages. Unfortunately, SMS was broken this year. We will be getting it back for next year. We had 37 informational calls, 14 calls about code of conduct issues, uh, five calls th that were referred to paraprofessional counseling, two calls about ADA compliance, and two reports of people hacking stuff at a hacking conference. Come on, guys. Page, okay, so obviously the other one to talk about is what happened last night, uh, aka why I didn't get any sleep. Um, so you've all heard the release that we put out, you know, a package was found, um, these are things that we have to take seriously. But this was taken especially seriously because you know, we're a big conference and we want to prep protect everyone here. So we escalated it to Caesars. They brought in their specialists and checked it out. There's a, a, a detailed process here. We don't jump at every kind of hoax, threat, etc. We investigate these things in detail. This was a specialist investigation that involved goons as well as law enforcement and multiple agencies from the Las Vegas uh, lo uh, local agencies. So, uh, Las Vegas Metro was involved as well as Las Vegas Fire Department. Uh, you probably saw all the flashing lights and the various emergency vehicles that came out. We evacuated the building as a, a, out of an abundance of, of precaution. Um, obviously nothing came of it, but we, I'm still glad that we did it. And I'm also really glad at the way it played out. You guys were awesome. Right? Watching members of the community working with my team and brothers and sister goons together, making sure people got out, there were no injuries, there was no panic. It was probably... It was probably one of the smoothest evacuations I've seen. It was great. And even better, everyone sort of dispersed. Hey, um, so that's not our first evacuation, is it? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, and it's I, I heard it's, it's not even our second. It's, uh, so. it's not even our fourth from memory. <laughs> <laughs> but still, <laughs> um, we actually had a ton of compliments come in to us from the uh, local emergency services. They said they couldn't believe how well we worked. Every time they wanted to make another step, like, can you clear this corridor? We'd already cleared it. And, oh, we think we need to, oh, You've already evacuated the building. Okay. Um, no, it was good. And thankfully, it wasn't a real thing.
but I'm really glad that we went through it the way we did, and I'm really glad for the partnerships that we built in doing it, because it gives me confidence about keeping everyone here safe. Um, if I can make a comment on that really quick as well, while the evacuation was going on, I had multiple attendees who said, like, okay, if this is happening, why is everyone so calm? And I, and I was like, well, we're supposed to be. Um, so give yourselves a round of applause, honestly. Um, you were incredible. Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday is up. And I'd like to uh, congratulate Wednesday for 10 years of being a goon and uh, retiring out as the lead of our press team. Thank you so much for all that you've done. All right. I have to say, prior to starting my own company, I never worked for a company that people didn't love to hate. <laughs> including AT&T, Facebook, and Uber. DEF CON is still the hardest PR challenge I have ever had. <laughs> um, but I do want to thank you all for 10 really great years. It's been an amazing experience. Um, this year, we saw some really interesting shifts in our press corps. Uh, when I started here 10 years ago, our team really existed to protect all of you from the peering eyes of sensationalist media. And what we saw this year, we had nearly 100 uh, credentialed uh, members of the press. Most of them are not traditional media, meaning they're not TV, they're not um, like newspapers or the outlets that you've heard of. Most of our press today are your friends and members of our community who are creating YouTube content, TikToks, blogs, educational materials. Um, if you fall in that category, please consider applying for a press badge next year so you have access to more support and resources from our team. Um, but I think it's important for everybody to note how that piece of our community is shifting because our relationship with media has not always been the best. And we're at the point now where when we when we speak of press in a derogatory way, we're talking about our fellow DEF CON community members. So I think it's important for us to know that we've, we've hit a pivotal point um, as a community. And I do want to thank all of you who are part of that next generation of content creators and citizen journalists who are joining um, our community as members of the press and helping us um, educate the rest of the world, not just on important security issues, but on uh, things that are happening within our community as well. Um, so with that being said, thank you for 10 years. I'll see you next year, but next year I'm going to be having fun and not working. <laughs> Hey, where's Bo? Bo. Where is Bo? Come on up. There he is. Oh, wait, we zoomed right past policy. There you Get go. Get out of here, Bo. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, DEF CON. Oh, hey. So my name is Bo Woods and I help out with policy at DEF CON, which is the newest department, I believe, at DEF CON. We're here to facilitate and make an easier experience for you and policymakers to get together so we stop having dumb laws uh, and have better laws and hopefully, uh, like Melanie does, um, to protect us and our community uh, against inadvertent capturing of uh, good faith uh, behavior. So. How many of you went to a policy session, whether it was main stage, whether it was over in the policy area? Just shout it out. Yay! <laughs> awesome. We had uh, about 2,000 people a day uh, in and out of that area, and it would have been more, but you, people wouldn't leave. You just kept sticking around to give and give and give and to engage with those policymakers. So thank you all. It's been, it's been great. Um, how many people played the White House badge challenge? How many people knew that there was a White House badge challenge? Okay, 
So the backstory here is we were talking with the White House and Roro went off on the side mission and was like engaging with them and was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you guys like did a badge for DEF CON? And so they did a badge for DEF CON. They did a challenge for DEF CON. Uh, he worked with uh, Neil from Defacement to make sure that there were codes hidden in the signage. So there's actually White House codes hidden in the signage out here. There's DEF CON stuff hidden in the White House website. So it is now going to be ar archived as a part of the National Archives. How cool is that? <laughs> DEF CON is in the National Archives. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, just talking about the policy impact uh, and what policy has meant, I think this is probably the first time that a DEF CON contest has been first announced by the Vice President of any country, let alone the United States. The, the AI, generative, AI Village Generative AI Red Team. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we had, uh, at one point I counted on our, on our list of VIPs, we had double digit number of Senate confirmed uh, or direct presidential reports, um, which is phenomenal. No, we had, to, we had to start turning them away. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, funny side note, uh, we, we had so many policymakers here that we're actually the reason that there was a bad shortage. Sorry about that, Jeff. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, sorry, I hope that wasn't a bad taste. Uh, but we did have, um, you know, policy policymakers up to and including the Secretary of DHS, Alejandro Mayorkas, came and did a main stage talk, and it was really, really great to see him. TSA Administrator David Pikoski, you know, and and uh, the President's Science Advisor, Dr. Arati Prabhakar. Um, those are all pretty big names who want to come out to DEFCON and engage this community because they see the value that you can bring. Um, I don't want to list off all the names, but at one point I looked around and I saw uh, two, three people from the current White House uh, who were appointed level positions and somebody turned to me and said, this is like the West Coast version of the White House. Like, are we going to have to send people to the next state over to preserve, uh, you know, the cyber chain of command um, to ensure that we don't have uh, some kind of thing happen here? Um, but they weren't just here to check out the Mohawks and the crazy hackers. They weren't just here as tourists. They were actually engaging. And we had one of our uh, speakers sitting down, uh, Moni Ruiz, working on her presentation that she was going to give. And in strolls Chris Inglis, the former National Cyber Director, and Chris Krebs, former head of CISA, sits down and just starts like talking with her, brainstorming with her on ideas for what should be in the session. And like that's the level of collaboration that they want to have with this community, to talk with us, to engage, uh, and to really share ideas and to listen to us. Um, I also want to say that I've probably got the best staff of people that I've ever worked with in my life. Um, there's too many of them to name all of them, um, but we had uh, 18 people, uh, 12 of them were kind of our core planning team, and over the past nine months, uh, eight months since January, we've probably logged somewhere between 25 to 3,000 hours planning this. And that sounds like a lot until you get on a call with a government representative and their team, and it takes an hour just to go through who's on the call. And <laughs> then you have to actually get to the substance. So they did a phenomenal job. Every one of them, they're standing over there. Give them a hand. Thank you very much. Um, I will say that I feel like we've made it now. We've been doing this for what, six years, Jeff? Yeah. Something like that. We made it because we're on scav hunt. We were number 71 on the scavenger hunt. And if anybody knows that one, it was filibuster policy at DEF CON. For those of you who don't know what a filibuster is, a filibuster is when somebody stands up, takes up all the time of anybody important in the chamber who's talking. Now, that sounds really disruptive, but one thing I don't think that they knew is that the leader of the house that it's in gets to make the rules for what a filibuster is. So, we had a couple of filibusters come through. I have to say where they were the most polite, respectful filibusters. They came up to us and said, hey, I've got this scav hunt thing. I'm not trying to be disruptive, but I need to win this challenge. I need to filibuster. How can I do that in a way that works for you guys? We're like, this is great, because we've already planned it. So, we walked them into the room, came up to the microphone at whatever stage of the talk they were in and said, that's a good one, you should say that. This is going to be a filibuster. Are you doing a filibuster right now? <laughs> <laughs> Solid object lesson, bro. Uh, March 71 off on my, uh, my scorecard. Yes, um, 
But uh, we defined filibuster in one of those rooms as you have to sing I'm a little teapot. So the person in order to get credit stood up and sang I'm a little teapot in our session and it was, it was pretty cool. Um, so that's all I have. I'll stop filibustering and uh, hand my remaining time, not that there is any, back to the conference. Thank you. Riverside. Riverside, come on up. Next up, uh, we've got Riverside representing the DevOps crew and DevOps runs all of the Discord server and services and our bots. And uh, it's been a pretty good year, so I'm gonna pass it over to Riverside to give you the whatnot along with uh, number two, Fox. Hey everyone. So this year I'm going to, uh, to be handing off some of the, the speaking to my second so that they uh, get the opportunity to do that. It's kind of nerve wracking, but uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, DevOps is a year round team. We work on things for automation as much as possible, try to make all the, the things that are mundane simple for everybody. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Mm. I've always wanted the opportunity to uh, participate in whose slide is it anyway, so let me know if you win. Um, that, that's yours, right? Yeah. Okay. And so this year we were working throughout the year, but it was kind of an off year for everybody. I think everybody felt just a little bit like they were coming out of COVID and a little bit more stressed, a little less energy, a little less availability for anything. So we did work this year, but we were a little bit close to the wire. Um, so as you can see, once we got to Vegas, uh, we had to do some last minute coding and last minute fixes for one of our big wins. Turn it. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> so, you know, we got it done. <laughs> uh, so this year our big wins were the Discord integration for the data duplication village. Um, we managed to get Discord integrated with the hard drive pickup. So after your hard drive was done, you got a code on Discord and you would come pick it up. We're hoping to expand this a little bit throughout the year for the villages and contests so that next year it'll be easier for everybody. It'll be easier for humans, easier for goons. We're hoping to reduce lines. It'll just be a better experience with better automation. So that's our goal for this year. And for those of you staring at that picture, that's a uh, voltage spike. We're, we're a uh, work anywhere team. So <laughs> I want to make sure that everybody knows he's actually working on the discord right there. And uh, you know, that's a thing. We work all year round from, you know, at home and while we're here, we might as well enjoy ourselves. And uh, last night when the things happened and we all kind of migrated out into the, the heat, um, we're like, ah, oh, well, maybe we should not be in the heat. So a party bus showed up and we discorded from party bus. So, <laughs> you know, you got to have fun while you're working and doing all the things. Yeah, so uh, the other two big wins this year was the Mast Mastodon integration. So we were able to integrate with Mastodon so that the contest announcements went out to everybody at the same time and people weren't asking questions. Um, we also spent a lot of time behind the scenes overhauling a code because Discord moved to slash commands, so we're trying to fix that. Next slide. Um, this year we will also be moving a lot of the code from one of our third party bots because it went curse flat in the middle of con and we are going to try to fix that and put it on our ops bot. So that's another goal for this year. Um, villages, tell us, tell us what you want this year. Tell me early, please. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the three weeks before con is not okay. <laughs> how about, how about like rest a week and then start letting us know? Yeah, we'll be on it this year. Um, that's all folks. I think we'll see you on Discord throughout the year and see you next year. Yep. And there's your stats you can look at. Thanks everyone. Next up, the knock. All right. How's it going? DefCon, DCTV audience, Twitch, everyone. Uh, my name is Ethan and I run the knock. And this is Mac. Hi, Mac. <laughs> Love you too. Okay. Uh, Pew Pew Maps and everything else and Guy Fieri. You know how we roll, right? So, these slides are going to be available later on knock.defcon.org. So, I'm not going to go through everything that is here, but what is green on this slide means we had really good days. 
yellow, you know, kind of, and uh, no reds, just partial. Um, so we showed up mostly last Sunday. Before that, we, Mac, did a lot of work. Um, and we showed up and we made everything happen. Uh, there was a lot of patching that had to be done when the conference was about to start already. So uh, it was a hard work year for us, but a good one. And Thursday, more patching. Thursday, the conference was already going and we're still working. Um, and Saturday was the day that everything worked quite well. Uh, no. Ooh. Right? And then right now the team is working, or maybe not, uh, on Teardown. And tomorrow we support the DEF CON trainings. And eventually some of us go home. Max is going to talk about the important stuff. And I'll be back. Uh, yeah, so the quick one is just this is kind of the infrastructure that people like to see coming from the internet down into our firewalls using the forum as our primary site and uh, Harris and Flamingo as satellite sites um, before it comes down to you either in the access points or the hard lines that we give you. Um, again, slides are online. But just kind of want to highlight that we have, you know, approximately 30 pieces of network gear and, you know, about, you know, 500 pieces of wireless gear uh, spread across the four sites because uh, it is, you know, almost, you know, a couple hundred thousand square feet uh, that we have to make sure that we can get all the WIFIs to you. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of customers that we're supporting any, any department. Uh, both direct and indirect departments, uh, as well as all of the attendees. Uh, we had a lot of people on, as you'll see in a minute, um, but just kind of remembering this is, this is all for you, all about you. Um, and this year, happy to report that in good fashion, we have uh, saturated our internet bandwidth again. You have to tell them it's about the Twitch watchers in the hallway. Yeah, uh, there, there's high suspicion that some of it is uh, people watching the talks from the con area uh, from Twitch. So next year we're probably going to be doing a little bit of on-site stuff, uh, making promises in front of everyone without talking to some people. So this will be interesting. Uh, but we got to address some of that. Um, so that's probably going to be a big priority for next year. Uh, we've definitely had an increase in number of usage or uh, users on on everything over the last few years approximately 20 to 30 percent this year, um, both in bandwidth as well as number of devices, number of people registered, number of people active on the wireless at any given time. Um, you know, this still represents, you know, a, a, only a percentage of the total attendees, but these are really big numbers, especially for a crowd that is traditionally um, non-trusting of their local network environments with good reason. So. Um, and then, as you may have noticed, a couple of things, as always, trying to support, uh, you know, challenges that come up, as always, trying to support the, the multitude of devices, uh, you know, Android, iOS, you know, laptops. Uh, we even have instructions for Blackberries if you have those. I highly recommend you take a look at those. <laughs> um, but yeah, just the, the number of devices in the different operating systems is always a fun thing for wireless setups. Uh, and then as well as we mentioned the uh, internet bandwidth saturation, we're technically 180% uh, of our contract usage. Um, so that's quite a bit. Uh, and then so we tried to do some traffic shaping, might have been a little overzealous with that if you were in Flamingo on Friday from like 2 to 4, sorry. Uh, that, 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 that was uh, Colin, he's over there just in case you want to find them. Uh, but we got that back and I think it actually was pretty good for the rest of the week even with the saturation. So thanks for, uh, thanks for that. Uh, some of the more interesting numbers, uh, although our, we put way too much on here from the fonts. Um, do you want to take a look at? 
better eyesight? Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Oh, I do. Well, don't. well, exactly. I wear glasses, but I'm not wearing glasses because I'm dumbass. Um, this is something that we started last year. It's called Enzyme. Uh, Strange, who works with us in the NOC, he installed that. As a, I don't know how many antennas he has on that thing, but it sits there and it keeps sniffing everything that is on the air, uh, network wise. And found a bunch of things 10 billion ESSIDs. Are, I don't remember the numbers because my, my eyesight is bad too. But there is uh, some of the most used. Uh, ESSIDs around it are not used but broadcasted. Uh, some have some pretty funny names. And you can see there's a Rick Row in the thing there. If you can see better than I do. So that's kind of funny. Right. Yeah. So we're going to keep doing this. Uh, strange, you have to start keeping historic data about this. Mm -hmm. You guys like graphs? So you believe everything that we say, right? Any graph shows uh, facts but sometimes they're not really related. About the network, this is a good one. Uh, so yeah, you go to bed or to party eventually. And um, as Max said, you use the internet, so cool. Most of our traffic, as you can imagine, is, comes from the wireless uh, access points. We have a lot of traffic uh, there. And one thing that we do every year too, we kind of take a look at the passwords that we use here and we tell you not to use important passwords or share credentials with other important stuff that you have. So there are some interesting passwords there. I'll give you a minute to look. We like the very last one. We appreciate that. We work hard to give you the best network. I obviously want to thank everyone on the team. Max, Sparky, Mike D, C75, Booger, Dedication, DP1I, CRV, John2, Wish, Strange, Tove, Muncie, Kami, and John. Uh, without the team, this cannot be done. They work really hard, and we really appreciate that. And we really want to thank our families for allowing us to be here uh, for a week uh, or more and to work through this throughout the year. So thanks to them. And obviously the DEF CON team, DT, for always supporting us and trusting us in doing this. Janet for solving all of the problems along with Nikita, also solving all of the problems so we can do work. Thank you. Also, also all of the department leads, you guys work with us. We can be tough, but we're fair, I guess. Right, but there's a lot of planning that we have to do and when we get here it's all about execution. So uh, I appreciate everything that, how you guys work with us. QM, Phil, Harry and all Caesars IT, they also help us a lot. Mabel and Encore, um, all of the DEF CON goons who kind of help you not to get to us when not needed. So we appreciate that. And obviously you for doing the good and bad things on the network. So thanks for that. Uh, and with all of that out of the way, it's time for your annual performance review, Luis. Uh, no, seriously. Um, Effen has been the lead for the DEF CON knock for the last 11 years. He's been a goon for seven, eight, nine? 17, 18, 17, 18 years. It, it becomes a blur. Um, and he is stepping down this year. Uh, so first I want to say, you know, give him a round of applause, thanking him for all of his work. Uh, so it's, uh, it's your problem now, right? Yeah, well, actually, it's not my problem. I was, I, they were like, are you going to do this? I was like, yeah, no. Um, so I would like to introduce up to the stage uh, Effen's uh, successor, Sparky. There he is. Uh, and in true... Uh, True management, you know, one of, one of the big jobs of management is to be 
the proverbial shit shield. So we've decided to give Louise his own shit shield. So, thank you again, Louise. Jeff, anything? Or? Thank you. Cool. No, okay. Just, cool. Eppen has uh, been so fantastic because he's he's like so sedate. Well, Jeff, the network is on fire, <laughs> and uh, we're working on it. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much, Eppen. Yeah. 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 Well, not to take a lot of time, but seriously, Jeff, everyone, thanks for trusting me. You are all, <clears throat> you are all amazing. The goons do a really good job here. And I also want to thank now everyone that worked with me throughout the years here. Shirel, I don't know if you're here. Um, Will and other people, thank you. Thank you very much. Video man, video man. Okay, video man. Do we have video man? There we go. Okay, next up we're going to talk about DEF CON TV. Hello. How do you follow that? Holy moly. I've known Neff in a very long time as well. I've been a goon for more than 20 years. 25. Anyway, so on to DEF CON TV. And congratulations, Jeffen. So we are, uh, I'm, I'm the department lead. Behind me we have our two seconds. We bring you DEF CON TV. How many people stayed in their room and watched TV this week? How many people watched Twitch this week? All right. They're in their rooms or watching Twitch. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. How many people are in your Hate room right now Hi, watching us? Lazy people. <laughs> Hi. Introverts unite. All right. So we had uh, seven yeah, hotels that. that we send video to. Uh, if you stayed in one of the, the hotels that are on dctv.defcon.org, you had a channel lineup. Uh, we also had the links to the streaming uh, for the tracks. In those hotels, we, de we deployed 28 decoders, or 28 channels essentially, 20,000 rooms, um, seven Twitch channels, which is new this year. Uh, I think we started out with four, and then we went up to six, and now we're at seven. So policy and villages were the new ones. Well, villages was the new ones this year. We did policy last year, but. And war stories, yeah, we got war stories as well, which was a, a last minute uh, addition, which was great that the NOC was able to facilitate that, so good for them. Next, no, right here. Yeah, yeah. Just a, just a quick note, as soon as I said that, my phone is blowing up with people who are watching it from their room <laughs> saying, I feel judged. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! So one of the stats we had was 77,000 views with 36,000 individual people, which is crazy. So that means, I mean, how many people do we have maybe here? Maybe 24? Yeah, so at least every one of you watched it once, according to our stats. Yeah, we probably had it from people around the world, right, tuning in. Uh, what was it, Friday morning was the most watched talk. I think it was Friday morning track one. Uh, 300 hours, more than 3,000 new followers. We really want to thank our volunteers. Uh, without them, that we show up Sunday night, we start prepping our gear, deploying into head ends, 
Tuesday, um, and we have to be live by Thursday this year, which is a day, day up in our schedule and timeline. Uh, it's really important to thank Caesars IT, um, the NOC, obviously, QM stores, source of knowledge. They're the people who record these talks. If you have uh, a need to store these on a, or to get the talks, you can go download them and buy them from uh, source of knowledge, which actually benefits the con, like, uh, and supports the con. That's it. Thank you guys. Okay. So uh, something new this year we haven't done, bef done before. Um, I'm, I'm filling in. It was sort of their concept and, and they executed it very well, but unfortunately they had to leave early, so pretend I look like uh, Kevin. Um, okay, so the concept here is that for exhibitors we had, um, traditionally we had one place and it was the vendor area. And we ended up with people in there that didn't really fit because they weren't really selling a thing. Um, they were like the University of, of Advancing Technology. They just wanted to tell you about their university and the opportunities there. And so we decided, okay, well, we're creating this new thing called community spaces that are for groups that don't quite fit into villages, but they're communities like the EFF or DEF CON groups, Blacks and Cyber. Um, so let's split the vendor area and we created this thing called exhibitors. But we want to do it DEF CON style. And so 100% um, uh, of the money that's generated, we charge them, of course. Um, and the money that's generated, we turn around and we convert that into food tokens for all the creators that are helping build the content here. So it helps feed them. And then also a percentage of what they pay is automatically donated to a list of, uh, we have a list of sort of approved uh, charitable organizations um, and they select which ones they want. And so if you notice, uh, we gathered about $160,000 from the exhibitors, 20,000 of that went to approved charities, 27,000 of that went for the operational setup. So that would be stuff like Encore and Sign Printing Power, those kinds of things. That's our overhead for them at a minimum. And then 24,000 um, went to new party sponsorships. So if you went to a party or ate some food as a creator, a lot of that was subsidized um, by the exhibitors. And these are the organizations that uh, received some funding. Code.org was the, uh, was popular. So it's a fantastic idea. We think we're going to try it again next year. Um, I think it really helped support some communities and, um, and allow us to not clutter the vendor area and give them their own identity. And, um, and it seemed pretty popular in there, so we'll, we'll give it a go. So thank you very much. Uh, next up is the info booth. Info booth. Here we go. Hello, I'm Little Bruiser, Department Head of Info. We're actually trying to do something new and rebrand Info Booth. Closer to the mic. Closer. Better? <laughs> All right. So we're going through a rebranding process and the whole reason behind it is we, were, we started out as Info Booth and a few years ago we added the Hacker Tracker team to our group. And in order to not be Info Booth and Hacker Tracker uh, and to be more inclusive, we all decided that we should come up with something new. And so internally we rebranded ourselves as Info. And after uh, DEF CON 30, we decided to start trying to rebrand externally. So how many of you actually came by one of our locations and asked us a question? 
I also heard a rumor about you, DT, that you had to ask for directions from one of our goons, and Ari uh, sent you to the proper place, I hope. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. It was a rumor. I had to confirm. Can confirm, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as you know, we're in the process because you can see we, you know, I've forgotten some things to deal with, like uh, Discord, but we're also no longer just a location based group because we have our website, we have all of our goons that are out on the floor if we have adequate staff to help you out, but we still try to roam around and help answer questions when you guys just look lost. Because <laughs> it happens. It happens to me. So, <clears throat> so that's, that's the story behind that. But even though um, the Hacker Tracker team isn't part of our group anymore, they've spun off, but we still work very closely with them. Um, they still run their website. They still run the app. They still give us information to help give you the best information that, that we can. So I really want to thank their, them for their help and support and running the app and the website for us. So. Oh. Cool. Thank you. Okay, next up is speakers. There you go. All right, DEF CON. Uh, I'm Pasties. I'm a speaker operations. Uh, we're the people that are responsible for getting the speakers on and off the stage and not responsible at all for what they uh, say while they're up there. Um, uh, luckily, we have a CFP board that I'd like to thank. They uh, curate thousands and thousands of submissions uh, and bring you guys the absolute best. Uh, it's amazing the quality of content we had. Uh, this year we had a particularly high number of what we've referred to as whales. Um, everyone is, is, everyone that presents on these stages is special. Um, they are unique uh, and intelligent and sweet and thoughtful people. Uh, I highly encourage that you talk to them if you have the opportunity. But there are some people that require a little bit of extra special help. Uh, and normally we get about two to four per year. I've looked back, the highest that we've ever had before of special requests was five. Uh, this year we had almost ten. One of them kind of doesn't count because they, they presented twice back to back. Um, uh, but it went off very smoothly. Uh, there was a lot of hours behind the scenes making sure that everything went smoothly for them. Uh, I think that they had a great time and I really hope that you guys all appreciated those. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank uh, the SOC team uh, they went above and beyond this year. We always work closely with them. They manage the room, we manage the stage. Um, this year, I don't know what changed. I can't track it, but I had, uh, there was less communication needed for coordination this year between uh, SOC, us, and the conference center. Things seemed to just go a lot more smoothly. The one uh, glaring exception to that was this morning uh, when, you know, the unknown unknown happened last night and we had to clear up from everything from last night. Um, uh, it, was, uh, it was an especially good year for us. Uh, we have some uh, metrics that we track every year internally. Uh, we track different metrics um, year to year. Uh, this year uh, we had 88% uh, of our talks score a four or five out of quality, uh, making sure, like, this is, uh, both uh, reports from our goons that are sitting in watching all these talks uh, and from some random sampling of attendees uh, that we do. If you ever got, if you got asked, thank you so much for doing that, uh, spending the 15 seconds or so to fill out that Google form. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all I got. Thank you DEF CON for being so amazing. I hope to see all of you guys again in the future. Okay, workshops. Workshops. Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, so, my name is Cindy. I'm taking over for the wonderful Megan, who has been running workshops for about 10 years now. And I'm very happy to be able to say that she's going to be retiring this year as well. So, that's exciting for her. Curious on how many of y'all were able to participate in our DEF CON workshops that were held downstairs at the Flamingo. 
I see a scattering of hands. That's great. So we had, for those of you who did, just keep an eye out. We're going to be able to provide some stats. We want to provide some stats back to our instructors. Some feedback requests are going to be coming out to your emails, to the email address you registered with. So thank you very much for filling that out in advance. We want to be able to provide that information back to our instructors. Um, some of the things that we can speak to today is we had over 2,000 seats that sold out with, within less than three hours. This was spread across 30 different talks or 30 different workshops. Our workshops are about four hours long, and we would love to have a huge, huge pile of submissions to go through for our call for papers section. So if y'all could submit, if you have a good idea, if you want to share some knowledge, submit them. The more feet, more input we get from y'all, and the more opportunity we have to review these, the more classes we could held, hold, and the more people can enjoy and learn from the experience. So please come on in, submit your stuff. We're open the same time as regular CFP, and we're happy to take a look at what you've got going on. Um, for those of you who were able to attend, thank you for, so much for being there. Thanks for all the support staff we've had across the time that we've been here. For, I don't know how long we're supposed to go on now. <laughs> I wasn't around at the beginning, so. But this has been great, and we're looking forward to continuing and getting more and more content out there for you all to be able to participate in. So thank you. Um, okay, just want to mention this isn't directly related to the DEF CON conference, but last year we started uh, following DEF CON tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday, we've been trying uh, training. And the thing that's different with our training, I think, um, compared to other people's training, is that we split the income 50-50 gross with the trainer. And that's the highest percentage I know of any conference or organization. And the idea there is to try to find and promote trainers in the community and kind of get them started. Um, if you haven't been before, um, uh, it's still open if you want to take some classes tomorrow. And then our next one we're trying is in Bellevue, Washington in November. So that's just something new you might hear about. Okay, next up, arts and entertainment. What do we got? Okay. All right. Sorry, uh, Chris Am couldn't be here today. Uh, came down with a bit of a cold, so uh, we're covering. I'm Zeke. So that's Jackalope. Woo, Jackalope! You guys know her. So there's some good news and some bad news. Uh, good news: she didn't bring the uh, the building down. Bad news: she didn't get to play. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was a uh, was, was a fun year. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had, a, we had our, uh, our uh, original soundtrack out, which is on media.defcon.org. Also Bandcamp. Oh, yeah, and it's on Bandcamp, too. And an expansion. Yeah, we've expanded. It's amazing. There's a second. Uh, there's second. We, we've, yeah, we actually have two tracks, or uh, two uh, albums out right now. Um, let's see. The band O'Craven. Oh, yeah, we had O'Craven, which uh, was a pirate band we were supposed to have, but uh, after our little... Uh, Drama. <laughs> Our little drama there. Well, we, we, we didn't have them uh, play. We are bringing them back next year, though. Let's see. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the artists and uh, all of our talent that we had here today. We had uh, Acid T, Alec Alexi Husky, Balonium, which was great, Codebreaker, Control, Deep Blue, Delchi, Dot or Not, DJ Pat Attack, DJ Scythe, Sterling, Dr. McGrew. Dre, Dreas? What do you say his name? It's a Dreas. Dreas, thank you. Uh, Dual Core, Fuzzy Knot, Great Scott, Grind 613, uh, Hex 7, The Icarus Kid, Ice Train Normal, Comp, Chris Klink, Magic Plan, Matrix, of course, Miss Jackalope, uh, Nighthawk, Nina Lowe, Ninjala, uh, uh, Nate, as I know him, and uh, NOX08. The NPC Collective, always great to have him here. Uh, of course, uh, O'Craven, who unfortunately didn't get to play. Uh, Pankle Dank, Scotch and Bubbles, SK, Skittish and Bus. And of course, who here listens to Soma FM? Give them a big round of applause because they bring you guys music 
24-7, and they have a dedicated channel just for DEF CON. So big thanks to Rusty and his crew there. Uh, let's see, continuing down our long list of talent here, uh, we've got Spice Rack, Syntax, Talking Sin, uh, Triode, Whitey Cracker, and Zebler in Conti Experience. Big thanks to all of them, and uh, we'll see you next year. Okay, next, oh, he's tall. Um, next up, uh, parties. Oh. Hello, all. You know, this does not get easier after a couple of years. Where do I start after last night's shutdown? <laughs> Everyone still had fun at the DEF CON parties though, right? You got to enjoy at least part of them. Every year, the parties get bigger and better, and I can't thank the organizers enough for all they do to bring those to DEF CON. So a big thank you to every single last one of you. Let's also not forget about the amazing meetups. Meetups are how the community can come together and share ideas, as well as provide a common place for our DC groups to come together in Vegas. Thank you to all our meetup organizers for getting your people together. Lastly, this is my last year standing up here in front of you all. I have been a goon for a couple years now, but next year I will get to enjoy the parties and meetups alongside you all. I would be remiss though to not give a huge shout out and thanks to some of the people I hold dear and who helped this year in a big way. Kevin, who apparently is not here, <laughs> who many of the organizers became intimately familiar with in the weeks leading up to the con, I deeply appreciate you for helping make things happen. Nikita, because he's a badass, <laughs> straight up. I love you my friend and thank you from the bottom of my heart. My team, Segfault, Wyasage and Rick Glass, you all rocked it this year. Lastly, DT, thank you for the last 13 years. Wearing this red badge has been magical. Much love everyone. Hey dispatch, we're looking for dispatch. <laughs> the glue, the glue that holds us together. Howdy. I'm RF. This is Asmodian X. We're uh, co-leads of uh, Dispatch, which is a little uh, organization that um, uh, has a couple of different goals. Uh, we come together every year, uh, set up uh, infrastructure including um, a number of repeaters, portable radios, comprises a um, multicast encrypted radio system that provides communications for speaker ops, um, SOC of course, and all of the other departments in the uh, conference. Our second goal after that is to facilitate communication between all the different departments. All of the, the areas of the uh, conference, the hotels, the forums, the um, water, the trash that sometimes gets changed, sometimes does not. Um, we, uh, as you can see, have a few different uh, uh, metrics up here. We take a lot of uh, calls, we take a lot of signal messages, we take a lot of radio calls. Uh, in addition to that, we also run the lost and found. Um, there may be a few items that uh, are of interest in the list there, uh, but um, I was made to, told to make clear that the uh, pepper spray is in fact not related to the one above it. <laughs> Uh, we, we do have one metric, so 20% ratio or 20% return rate on our uh, lost and found items, so thank you very much for bringing everything back in, but make sure you also come and get it. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much to all of the great goons, all of the leadership, Nikita especially, and uh, we'd like to thank you, the humans, for coming together and making this conference great. Thank you. Okay, the video team. Is that Sleestack? Or is that me? Oh, it's gonna be me. Okay then. Um, so, we started a video team um, last year, it was the first year, uh, where we really wanted to try to find indep uh, independent 
uh, either influencers or just people in the community who know what they're doing when it comes to interviewing people, capturing video, uh, and have them run around the con, spend time in different villages, contests, and events, and capture what's going on. And this is different than just catching video or us trying to find some cool snippets online. It's really sort of, you're trying to explain to somebody what happens at DEF CON. You can also say, hey, check out all these like B-roll, check out all these other side things that are happening. Um, and it's been really fantastic. So every year we, we divvy up all the different uh, possibilities. People self-assign them. Uh, they upload the video. We've got almost all the video edited by tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll start tagging them and starting next week uh, you'll start seeing all the, all the different things. There might be one on Aviation Village or Blue Team Village or AppSec or some crazy shenanigans. So uh, once we start announcing that we'll put it on all the socials. But uh, thank you for letting the, our video team into your groups and, uh, and record. And what I hope it does is allows you to sort of explain to your friends like, hey, this is what I'm doing, you know, at DEF CON. Okay, now, villages. A big chunk of the con. Hack the planet. So, So first of all, I want to start off and say we didn't actually plan this, but I am wearing a Boba Fett riding a bike shirt, yeah. and his shirt says, this is the way. Actually, I think we're missing somebody. Zant, can you get up here too, please? Come on. Here he comes. Come on, Zant. It's your transition year. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, old timer. We need you on stage. So uh, we'd like to first off uh, thank all of the village leads. Uh, this year we had 32 in-person villages, one remote village that was DEF CON uh, VR, and then we had also our orphan stepchild which was Hackasat and they stayed on us the entire time. We love them. They're amazing. Thank you for the awesome job you guys did at CON this year. Really thank you to all the village leads. Um, you guys stayed on us the entire year now it seems like, um, making sure that we got everything planned and executed perfectly. And in normal DEF CON fashion it was a catastrophe in the first two days but we got it there thankfully to all the other departments and all the village leads you know working with us. Um, I want to thank all of our DEF CON village goons. Uh, I think we're missing about four or five of them so thank you for filling in uh, especially since we were understaffed this year. And Pedro? All right. So first of all I want to thank Zant. Uh, there's a discrepancy on how long he's been here so we're just going to go straight to the retirement home. Um, <laughs> going into thanks, first of all I want to thank Honey. Um, without Honey a lot of this stuff wouldn't be possible. We are co-leads on these villages and it really does take a team to make it happen. I would like to thank our spouses and families because this is a full-time job on top of a full-time job. A lot of people are unaware how much it takes to facilitate a conference of this size. Um, again, uh, thanking Zant, but I also want to thank his family. You know, going back to us putting in so much time, well, Zant's been doing this so long that he's going to the retirement home. Uh, I would like to thank all of our villages and their families for giving them the freedom and the you know, unrestricting them so that they could provide the content that brings a lot of people into this conference. Um, I would like to thank all of our content providers, both past and present. This includes everybody else, you know, third party badge makers. This includes music, badges, uh, other leads. If you know, you know, you know, there's a lot of people giving out stuff that's not normally in the program. Attendees. Thank you. There is so many people here right now and um, I'm not Willy Wonka, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm pretty nervous standing up here talking to everybody because there's been times that I've been sitting on that side of the stage watching somebody give a presentation as if it's like the most natural thing. My ears are burning, my face is red, <laughs> I'm trying to control my breathing. <laughs> DT and family, 
Thank you very much. When, yeah, go, go introverts. Um, the first time I came to DEF CON, I really didn't know what to expect. A lot of my plans fell through and I ended up in one of the villages doing some stuff that I, to me was just whatever and other people were like, obviously you know a lot more about this than the rest of us. Can you show us what you're doing? From there it evolved into parties and it evolved into volunteering with packet hacking. I want to thank Riverside for giving me that opportunity. And then it evolved into this. And this is going to lead into something else that I want to talk about. Janet, I don't know where you are. I can't see you, but thank you very much for everything you've done for us. Nikita, Nikita is like the person that props everything up. Like, you know, uh, there's been times when I'm just ready to quit, to walk away. Nikita gives us a quick pep top and I'm like, you know what, I've got this. <laughs> so what I would like to say is that villages are tough, coordination is rough, but a bomb threat is on a new level. <laughs> One of the questions I get asked a lot, you know, in the, over this past year is what are we looking for? We're looking for content. Specifically, we have villages that put down some stuff that is 101, 201, 301, 401, and then it starts pushing into doctoral level stuff. The other thing that we're looking for is first time talks. I do get a lot of feedback from people talking about, well, I've seen that talk at four or five other conferences. That's a big thing to us. We're looking at this. You know, like Honey said, we had 40 plus applications. We're reading these applications. We're looking at content. We're looking at talks. Um, an idea that came up to me today was one of our village leads came up and said, I think you and Honey should give a talk on facilitating villages for DEF CON. So we may actually go through the entire process of a, submitting a talk for the CFP next year at DEF CON. If it sucks, well then they won't get selected, right? Um, I also want to talk about a single volunteer in one of the villages that swam through a sea of people and found me specifically. He reached out and said that he wanted to be a volunteer for villages and it just, I found it interesting that he found a way to swim through all these people and landed directly on me. I like that persistence. You know, we're gonna talk to him and see if we can bring him on as a, as a goo next year. Uh, lastly, I'd like to say for all of you that know, you know you know, follow the white rabbit. <laughs> Zach. Well, so those of you that know me, I've been doing this for a long time and I don't like to talk a lot. So we're going to keep it short. Thanks to these two, I had a very relaxing con. I didn't have a whole lot to do, almost nothing. My phone died four days ago, so I heard nothing going on. But Jeff, I can tell you one thing. Villages, I think, had about 152,000 square feet this year. Villages need more space. <laughs> No Give it up for Zant. This is his last year. Okay. I guess I'm doing this next slide as well. Um, Hackers with Disabilities, HDA. So this is a group that's been around, uh, led by uh, AP Delchi for a number of years. Um, this is one of the first years we've tried to fully integrate HDA with its own community space as opposed to just helping coordinate and build the uh, materials um, and advice on how to make uh, the conference more accessible to those with disabilities, everything from people that are uh, hearing impaired, for subtitling, uh, for wheelchair accessibility, for building maps on the most efficient ways to get between the properties for people who have to use elevators. Um, and the community space this year where they could get together, share stories, um, hack on uh, assistance uh, mobility devices and they provide uh, year round support and advocacy. So um, there's an HDA section on the DEF CON forums. If you have any questions or feedback or advice, he takes it very seriously and that means he makes sure I take it very seriously. So I just want to congratulate AP Delchi for a successful year and uh, keep doing what you're doing, making the conference more accessible. <laughs> merchandise. Okay, next up we've got the merchandise, previously known as swag. 
until we realize that means that stuff we all get for free and we're not giving the stuff away for free, so it turns into merchandise. Thank you, Jeff. How many people waited in my line this year? How many people liked the new ordering system this year? Thank you, everybody. We tried a few new things this year. Every year we've had like incremental improvements, but we just weren't keeping up with all of you. So we decided we had to try some new stuff this year. Some stuff we've been trying to do for years that we finally actually were able to execute on. So we got it, the pictures of stuff online and in the mobile app. We had the slideshow going through. And the big thing is we had ordering through mobile devices for our team. So you could create the list of what you wanted from Hacker Tracker. Do people like making the list in Hacker Tracker? Yeah. Awesome. So we were tasked with trying to make things faster and this is what we came up with. And I think that the stats show that we, we had some real improvements this year. Uh, we actually had an average order velocity that was 33% faster than we had last year on Thursday. Um, or average order size was also up about 30% uh, on Thursday from year over year. Uh, we actually had an order of 46 items, which was annoying to pick. Um, most popular shirt size this year was medium. Good job. <laughs> uh, the first item that we sold out an individual size on was at 8.20 a.m. on Thursday. Uh, and our first uh, sellout of all sizes of an item was at 3.45 p.m. on Thursday. So we were really moving through product. We moved through the product a lot quicker on Thursday, so we had less stuff to sell the rest of the week, unfortunately. Um, and we took zero credit cards. So. Ideas for next year? Yeah. We have some ideas of what we're going to improve for next year. Uh, you know, this year was really a test of some of the new systems. Big things we're wanting to do is now we got order taking going pretty good. We need to work on more of the fulfillment stuff. So we're going to be working on that over the year and figuring out how we can get you all reunited with your stuff quicker. Um, I would like to thank many people here. The Hacker Tracker folks put in really heroic effort to get this all working for you all. Uh, we couldn't do anything without our artists. We couldn't do anything without QM stores getting our stuff. And thank you so much for the um, merch goons and everybody who, uh, at DEF CON for working, us, uh, working with us, Jeff for giving us the opportunity, Nikita, Janet, Will, everybody for getting us everything we need to do this. Thank you very much. Okay, demo labs. Demo labs. Okay, you got that. Grifter. Hey. Um, so Heisenberg runs the demo labs here at DEF CON, but he had to take off early, so I'm stepping in for him. Um, the, the demo labs was an idea basically to give a platform for folks who had created some kind of tool or something that they could share with the community, a place to just demonstrate like this is what I came up with, do you like this idea, get feedback on it and hopefully continue to develop into something that you all love. Um, we had 58 different demo lab submissions this year and 36 of those were selected. So um, if you're looking to get that speaker badge, I, I got a hack for you. Um, start developing your tool. Please submit to us. Um, Heisenberg will um, will pour through it and um, and get you in there to show off uh, whatever you've got. You get two hours to do it. So if you if it's a short demo, you can run through dip multiple groups over and over. And the lines were down the hall this year. So um, you know, uh, more space, more space, more space. Right. So. Um, Thank you uh, again to Heisenberg for all the effort that he puts in, the contests and event goons who support him in doing that, and for all of you for the cool things that you create and for sharing uh, your beautiful gifts with us. Oh, I'm He's gone. It's time to take over. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Look at me. You Jeff left. I got this. <laughs> Let's burn this shit to the ground. Um, you are the captain no, now. All right, uh, so I'm up again. Uh, so starting uh, contests and events. Uh, this year we had 66 different contests and events for all of you to enjoy. So, um, so thank you to all the creators first for everything that you made for us. 
Um, w getting to watch DEF CON and see tinfoil hats wandering down the hall and somebody rolling a giant D20 across the floor uh, and, you know, other ridiculous things. A big part of DEF CON, I think, for all of us is to keep DEF CON weird and the contests and events definitely do that. I will say though, um, 66 different contests and events, they would be nothing without those of you participating in them. So thank you. Thank you for all of the attendees, the thousands of attendees who compete. Um, a, you know, 100 plus item list of questionable ethical and legal um, items is nothing without someone who's like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> what you got? Oh, it's my insurer. Oh, okay. This, I, I was on the list this year because we were talking about how um, Russ Rogers and I um, came up with the idea for DEF CON groups 20 years ago, this con, right? So DEF CON groups started 20 years ago and Russ was like, man, we really should um, start drinking some insurer. And so clearly the scavenger hunt was paying attention and here's my insurer and a straw. It's actually, it's not bad. It's, um, it's like chalky yoo-hoo. I don't know. <laughs> I've had a lot. All right. Um, a couple of thanks. So if Jeff is the brains of DEF CON, then Nikita is the heart. Um, big, huge thank you to Nikita. I love you, Nikita. So um, honestly, like there's myself as the department lead and then Seacove and Cabes as the, as the seconds for contests, but, um, but Nikita is part of our crew as well. Um, and I guess, yes, I heard somebody yell something out. So if, if Jeff is the brain and Nikita is the heart, all of you are the soul of DEF CON. Um, thank you for competing. If, um, if you have an idea, this year we had 16 new contests. It was fantastic. There was insane participation. Every contest said, wow, we really had um, people step it up. The number of attendees was absolutely phenomenal. So uh, if you've got an idea, send it to us, um, grifter at defcon.org or contest at defcon.org and we'll, uh, we'll see what you got and hopefully get you a space in the contest area next year. now what you've all been waiting for. Um, so 66 contests, but only a handful get a black badge. I will explain so everybody understands how the black badges work. Um, a black badge means that you put in a significant amount of effort into whatever it was that you were competing in. It means going up against m multiple hacker disciplines, um, spending a decent amount of time on it, right? We're not, I, I love the beverage cooling contraption folks, right? But if you made a beer real cold, that's probably not gonna get you <laughs> entry to DEF CON for life. However, if you spent the entire weekend um, hacking away on uh, something in space, then, then maybe that, that might get you there. Um, we don't decide who's going to get the black badges until today. So no one knew which contests were going to get black badges because we want you to compete in contests because you love them and you love the idea behind them, not because you think you're getting a black badge. Um, you will see some repeat faces because they put in the work and if you competed in those contests, you know that so did you. Um, so to get us started, uh, this is their second year taking over the SE community village. So uh, they leveled it up last year and they, they brought it even, uh, even more this year. So uh, the first badge is going to the SE community CTF. Thank you. I promise I'm making sense of myself there. Okay. All right. Hello everyone. This year we tried to follow suit of the DEF CON theme. When we saw the book Snow Crash in the recommended reading list, Snow Crash is set in the early 21st century after the U.S. is ravaged with hyperinflation. Hmm. 
The story uh, starts by introducing the hero, who is a pizza delivery driver, where the pizza industry, uh, industry is a, considered a critical infrastructure industry. As such, it seemed fitting to hyper-focus on the pizza industry for all of our calls. We had a lot of competitors by f uh, focusing on the pizza industry find some very interesting things about the pizza industry. Anyhow, with uh, our, our competition, we had uh, many submissions. 14 teams got chosen. We went, did a head-to-head -head style again against seven of those pizza companies. These competitors had months of preparation, OSINT skills, planning, pre-tax, working with coaches. And out of all of that, we have our two, win we have our first and second place. I'll turn that over to Snow to introduce them. What's up, nerds? Oh, so weird. It's loud. Aw. Hi, friends. Okay. First of all, before I announce our winners, I wanted to give a big thanks to DT, Grifter, Nikita, all of the goons, our volunteers who are currently setting down, and you all for coming and your love and support, and the, you're the reason why we do this village. So thank you all for coming. So we do not have our second place winner on the stage with us, but as Team Doom, but our first place winner was actually our second place winner last year. So he came back for vengeance and it showed in all of his work. He tore it up. So I want to give a shout out, round of applause to Jason who won this year's black badge. Okay, we gotta explain. Okay, pretend this is a black man. Alright. Okay, great. Smile, wave. <laughs> so let me just uh, interject briefly. What's going on with the black badges is they also had a problem, just like the normal badges. So, uh, so what's happening is they're getting uh, the black badges as they were shipped and we're constructing and completing them and so they'll swap out for the real black badges but it's not fair for them to not get handed something. So they have this artifact uh, to remember the problem from and then we'll swap them all out with the authentic ones. And um, the story here is there's electroluminescent paint so they glow but the problem is you have to use a high pressure low velocity uh, spray gun, you have to measure the electrical voltage each time, everything has to be perfect and it's not easy and the manufacturing delays basically meant there's not enough time to construct them with enough care, they just couldn't be built in time. Um, so they will be built in uh, before next year and we'll swap them out and then you get to see what they're really like. So uh, we apologize for all the teams for winning black badges. Yes, they are black badges. Yes, they will become the real deal. But for now, um, I think I have in my backpack what they're supposed to look like. And it does glow, but really faintly. It's supposed to be really bright. So let me see if I can give you a realistic view of what it's supposed to be. You can zoom in on it. So it everything that's black is masked is the mask and everything else is supposed to glow very brightly. If we turn off all the lights maybe you can see it. <laughs> so, it's <laughs> so it's not, not what we'd hope for um, but that's the life of, of manufacturing delays. All the counter, all the counter so figures are getting really excited that said, excited let's continue right on the black badges and we'll culminate with the winners of the capture the flag contest which still need to get us the name of the winning team. Come on, get us the winning team name. Okay. Do you want to bring it over here? Yeah, however, yeah, yeah. I'll give it a minute. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> All right, um, our next contest coming up, uh, if you were in the contest area, you know, in the last few days, there's a huge team that comes out and they set up a city essentially. There's a glowing city against the wall with all the utilities it takes to run that city. Water is flowing, power is aggressively making taser-like noises at us um, all weekend long. You don't get used to it, I promise. And um, all that effort uh, is appreciated. It looks beautiful, it's difficult to do, and that's what earned them this black badge. Hello DEFCON! Annyeong Haseo from Korea! 
My name is Rana and I'm from the Red Alert ICS CDF team. Quite a mouthful, yes. We've been running the ICS CDF for the past uh, three days and we've been truly overwhelmed by the response that we've had this year. And uh, we've had 108 teams come out and play with all the toys that we've got. And uh, without further delay, on third position, we've got the Golden Life Gang. Not here. Not here. All right. On second position, Tesuji. Can we have a round of applause for them, please? I have 100 and on first position, Screaming Fist. Whoever wants to receive it, whoever wants leader. to receive it. Oh, you want to? <laughs> but for the rest of them, we've got some Korean fans. All <laughs> from Screaming Fist. And go off to try and get registered. Good job, guys. And uh, thank you, DEF CON and all the goons, especially Seiko and Capes, for the wonderful support that we've received. And the team that we have here, all the way from South Korea, who've made this possible. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you very much, and see you next year. All right, this, uh, this next contest is one that alternates every other year. Um, they put a, a ton of effort into essentially sending their contestants on quests. Okay, literally sending their, <laughs> sending their, their contestants on quests. They've, um, they've got that beautiful D20 I was talking about earlier. And um, the organizer here is actually, um, we play D&D together. And so I rolled the die, natural one. Uh, um, but again, lots of effort, a lot of fun, and one of those contests that really adds to the mystique that is DEF CON, it's Dungeons at DEF CON. Thanks everyone. So, Dungeons this year, uh, we went old school, uh, ran a campaign, um, the teams were going through, we started out with 57 teams. Most of them got TPK'd until the end. Ten teams were running uh, a dungeon crawl full of puzzles, having to solve them to get advanced into their final area. We had individual DMs running the campaigns for each of the teams, which was fantastic. And the goal was to build this magical medallion that would cure con flu. So after, if you're sick, you can go talk to this team. They'll have the medallion for you. Um, it was down to four teams in the end, neck and neck, fantastic competition. Uh, the end uh, result was finally achieved by this team. Camel case for the win. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Let's see who's up next. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned earlier that sometimes you see a repeat faces that come up here and that means that a contest has not only brought it but they bring it year after year after year. They evolve their challenges, they keep all of you engaged and they keep you coming back for more and I think uh, a perfect example of that is Capture the Packet. Hello everyone. So every year we get pushed to bring new and more insane things to make DEF CON attendees cry when they're playing our CTF. Um, so we, we did that. Um, louder, closer. Louder, louder, closer, closer, eat the mic. Okay, got it. So the, uh, this year we, we did a ton of things uh, to make it even more insane than ever before. It was really hard. We have a, a set of compete competitors that come back every year, year over year. And this group behind me, this is what you won in 2015. You've played over and over and over and over, and you get one black badge, and there's two of them. So they're like, "Well, we're going to just keep going until we get one for the other guy." And uh, <laughs> it hasn't always been successful, but this year 
they finally got their second black badge. So give them a hand. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to all the people that helped make it happen. Oh, and the Wallace, Wallace Sheep DJ community for making the tunes happen, especially Frecocious and all of them. Thanks so much for making that happen during the event. Um, all right, this, uh, this next contest is kind of hard to miss. Uh, if you were in the contest area, you could see their cars parked in the back. Um, they not only design an incredible challenge uh, that's very, very difficult, but the challenge itself and some of the tools that you use go home with you so you can keep it going uh, even after DEF CON. So the next one's up for a black badge is the Car Hacking CTF. Awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, thank everybody here. Um, our challenges this year have definitely evolved a lot. Uh, we're trying to make them more and more difficult. And I want to say a big thank you for everybody that put our CTF challenges to together. It's not always traditional networking equipment that they're working with. It's vehicles and embedded systems. So thank you for all that. Um, we did have a lot more contestants this year. Typically we have about 100 people. We had almost 200 this year. So there's definitely a bigger turnout and we really appreciate it. This year's uh, first place prize that we're giving the black badge out to is uh, the team here called Semi Comma. Thank you guys very much. We really appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Uh, these next folks uh, merge hacking and gaming, and they put on quite the show. Uh, I know when, when things really get going in there, there's a giant crowd around their area. Um, we also discovered uh, today, actually, while looking over some things, that they are the second longest running CTF at DEF CON. So the next black badge goes to Hack Fortress. Thank you. It's an honor that our little hacking and gaming CTF has been chosen as a black badge event at DEF CON 31. Like most of our challenges this year, this speech was assisted by ChatGPT, who also told us that we are the second longest running CTF at DEF CON and we don't keep records, so we're going to believe our machine overlords. This year's final match was between Colonel Poppers, our second place finishers, and the match winners the Honorable Duke Shadwell, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and his uncommonly large hound. The match was hard fought. Teams endured binary RE puzzles and survived Nerf gun fights. All the skills needed to thrive in cybersecurity. Thank you to DT and the DEF CON team for another year of DEF CON memories. Thank you to the Schmoo Group for all the support and our eight excellent team of competitors. We look forward to seeing all of our old contestants and new contestants at ShmooCon 2024 and DEF CON 32. Lastly, thank you to the Hack Fortress staff for all the work put in creating puzzles and deving code. And we would also like to report that none of our equipment was the suspicious package last night. Congrats and thank you to our winners. All right, next up, um, these folks have been coming to DEF CON for a really long time. They walk around the halls, they go in the villages, they see what everybody's doing, and they were like, man, DEF CON can hack anything on this earth. Hold my beer. Hack a sat. <laughs> Hey everybody. So I want to get first off give a, an immense thank you to DEF CON and the collective sitting up here because it wouldn't be possible without them. Uh, to all of you here in Afar, the village leads, the contest leads, thank you so much. To the aerospace village, thank you for your patience most importantly. And to the whole organizing team, you guys did it. The first CTF in space. And I will be forever grateful 
to the organizing team. So thank you so much. <laughs> One th quick thing, you know how the, and the uh, saying goes, the journey is greater than the destination? I'm here to tell you that both are great. <laughs> we had a third place team jump PFS, second place team Poland can into space, and with our first place team, macaroni. All right, last but certainly not least, um, they really require no introduction and, uh, and yet I do it every year. Uh, the, the CTF of all CTFs, uh, capture the flag. Weird. Hello, hello, DefCon. Uh, this year, our uh, uh, the DefCon CTF featured 12 teams. Uh, these 12 teams qualified in July at an open qualifier we hosted, and they came to DefCon for the finale. Uh, one returning feature from last year was live CTF. This year we set up a double elimination bracket where teams would send their champions to compete head to head live streamed. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Uh, we had last year's and this year's brackets available at livectf.com. Uh, for our main game, we used a custom hypervisor with ephemeral containers and we were able to use this to bring kernel pwnage to DEF CON finals. Um, all of our challenges and infrastructure will be released open source in the coming days and we invite you to check it out and see all the hard work that my team did to put this together and all the torment that we inflicted on our competitors. Uh, the results of this year's DEF CON CTF are, in third place, TWN48 with 6,756 points. In second place, Blue Water with 7,428 points. And uh, this is my seventh uh, DEF CON finals that I've hosted. I'm almost tired of saying it at this point. But in first place, the Maple Mallard Magistrates with an incredible 9,800 points. <laughs> Okay, here you go. Start again. All right. Um, hi, everyone. There are a lot of people here. Uh, we're thrilled and honored to be the winners of DEF CON 31 CTF finals. Um, our team, MMM, uh, is a joint team, actually, a collaboration between PPP, representing the US, uh, the DOC, representing Korea, and Maple Bacon from Canada. Um, <laughs> uh, as an international super team, uh, we faced a well-run well and enjoyable competition over the past three days. Um, lack of sleep, but um, it, was, it was fun. Uh, thanks to incredible teamwork and a shared passion for the game, uh, we not only had fun, but emerged as the winners. Uh, I want to extend our thanks to our organizers uh, for creating such an ex exciting environment um, and a lot of challenges, uh, there were a lot of them, uh, and to my teammates uh, for their dedication and synergy. Uh, thank you and we hope to see you all again next year. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to personally thank, look at all these DEF CON departments. When I said it takes over 500 people to make it happen, that's not even counting the creators who build the content. This is, this is the departments that make it happen. Um, this year the new department was uh, HDA and, uh, and I just want to call out 
Let's give them a round of applause for the back end work they do all year round. <laughs> and to honor those goons, not all of them are listed that are retiring, but to honor those goons that have put in 10 years or more, DEF CON does what we call the gold badge. And the gold badge allows those who put in more than 10, 10 or more years of service in, they get to, it's like their Uber, they get to attend for life for all they've sacrificed for us to make the conference happen. So let's give our retiring goons a round of applause. Uh, in the back end, year round, we have a crew um, that deals with everything you can think of related to um, organizing a, a conference of conferences. So I just want to call out Nikita, Janet, Neil, Will, Darrington. The Jeff is not me, it's our lawyer Jeff who's been busy lately. Um, <laughs> uh, Tom and uh, TCMBC who couldn't be here because he's making sure our servers operate. Uh, so he's remote hands making sure all of the things stay up. And then all department leads and seconds, thank you so much for uh, sticking it out with me. <laughs> we run a sort of a robust online presence year round. I'm just putting this up here in case you want to take a shot with your camera. Um, it's gotten a little crazy this year with the addition of Blue Sky and Threads and Twitter X and Mastodon. And at some point we were going to really have to figure out, like we can't support everything all the time, it's a little crazy. Um, but the top are the things we run. We run our own s Mastodon server. We run the f we've been running our forums for over 25 years. Yeah. We've seen forums come and go. Um, we run a movie night every week, DEF CON groups meet up, and uh, we, people still love Discord. It wasn't just a, a COVID thing. So we have a lot of activity with the DevOps groups. Um, so anyway, yeah, these are all the ways to get in touch or participate. The dates for next year, DEF CON 32 is August 8th to the 11th. And then we go a little bit earlier, DEF CON 33, 7th to the 10th. And we're going to be doing a lot of post-con review to figure out what we can do with the floor plans and the flow and the timing to make it uh, less crowded and just make things easier on everybody. So, you know, every year we kind of rewrite our assumptions and we'll do that again based on the feedback uh, from this year. So, with that said, we'll see you again next year. <laughs> Woo! In the, in the coming, coming weeks, we will get all the videos edited, the English uh, subtitles that we do, the B-roll edits. We'll get everything, we'll update this slide deck with more uh, details on the winners and we'll post it all online. So thank you very much. Hack the planet! Hack the planet! Hack the planet! <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.